Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks very much for coming along. Uh, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share our research findings with you, and um, hopefully we'll have a good discussion afterwards. Um, I just wanted to start by saying that I didn't want it all to be ne negative and doom and gloom about the farming sector. You know, far, before we talk about stress and the associated, um, how, how, what we can do about it, I wanted just to mention that what the farmers told us, you know, that they, a lot of them love their livelihood, they find a lot of job satisfaction, they like the outdoor life, they said uh, they love not being tied to a desk, which a lot of us are, and, um, you know, they like being their own boss and self-determining. So th there is a lot of positives about farming and um, the occupation of farming. So I thought it was worth highlighting that. And we did mention that in our research, and that's how we started our research, asking farmers really what was, what was good about it. So, but um, however, nevertheless, you know, it is well documented that farming is a very stressful occupation. And that's why... Um, Really, we, we started this research. This research was in partnership of Ulster University, in partnership with the University of Birmingham, as Mark mentioned. And we started this um, in 2013. And the Chief Medical Report, uh, Officer's Report, had come out really highlighting the issue of rural health and well-being, in particular um, farming families and he he actually highlighted at this, at that stage some of the causes of stress so we we um, th this research that we looked at northern ireland male farmers and it was part of the, the the larger research project that also included women in farming and uh, farmers who have diversified however i'm just going to um, tell you about this strand at the moment you can ask you can talk to Sina afterwards about the other strands as well so, um, really, I thought I'd start by just, I'm sure you're all well aware, we've all suffered from stress at some stage, and stress can be a positive thing, and can be a motivating factor, and give us, give us short boosts of energy. So, in, in moderation, stress is definitely not, not all bad. However, occupational stress that we're going to talk about today, um, occupational stress is really um, a huge issue. Uh, it's a second only to musculoskeletal disorders with regard to people being off work and the effects um, as, as we know can be really devastating so what is stress stress is well the health and safety executive uh, defines stress as um, inability adverse adverse reaction to excessive pressures or other demands in other words a feeling of inability to cope so that's what we were talking about long term it's not a short term thing long term in feelings of inability to cope so obviously some of the symptoms with regard to that as as i'm sure many of you know some of the symptoms would include depression anxiety lacking energy sleep sleep problems problems concentration irritability poor decision making, and then the physiological effects, in particular headaches, and has been associated with heart disease. So, um, and there's, as Mark mentioned, there's ongoing, um, even recently, there's been a lot of publicity about the effects of occupational stress. So these symptoms can then have um, effects on relationships and make people more prone to accidents, um, can, some people can become dependent on alcohol or other drug misuse, um, and then poor health and um, less productivity, poor performance, poor work performance. So, um, and farmers are particularly at high risk of, of stress. So, just get my little device here. Here we go. Yes, so farmers are particularly at risk. Um, so they have been shown, some studies say that farming is number one um, high risk occupation for stress. Other studies have said that farmers are in the top 10 occupations for high suicide risk. Either way, it's definitely high risk with regard to stress and uh, suicide, as it says here, second most common cause of death after accidents in young farmers. And suicide is also a significant cause of mortality in older and retired farmers and amongst farmers' wives. Um, but 
Really, what's different about farming than other occupations? Well, farming is really very unique. The ver very unique in that, um, obviously, they're self-employed, small businesses, but the merge between home life and family life, where, where does work finish and home start? Uh, that's, and when, do you, when do you actually get away? You don't leave the workplace when you, when you live there. And the, the heritage factor that you know, farmers sometimes often would feel if they had to sell the farm, are they betraying past generations and future generations? So, and they feel um, that they're skilled in what they do. They know what to do. They couldn't imagine, often a lot of farmers would, couldn't imagine doing anything else but farming. And often where they live, there's limited employment opportunities. So it's not like other people where you think, I'll just I'll apply for a different job. It's very unique. Um, and then obviously the family are involved. Mo in most cases, the family are very much involved in different, in different activities around the farm. So you've got those dynamics. And the other branch of the study with regard to women in farming looked at these family dynamics and what are the and, and uh, what are the other members of the family contributing financially and in other ways towards the farm. Um, so why is it stressful, apart from these family dynamics and these particularly unique aspects of farming, why is it particularly stressful? Let me see what I've got here. So uh, competition, as Mark has referred to, regulation, disease, adverse weather, family, financial worries, uh, a lot of farmers in previous studies and in our farmer in our studies mentioned isolation. Some of them see people every every day, but a, a, a considerable proportion of them feel very isolated and don't see, see people. And, uh, and the actual qualitative details we got in the study repeatedly, again and again, people say lonely and by myself lonely. Um, so isolation can be a big issue. Also, other also, it's really physically demanding. And sitting in tractors for hours a day, a lot of them were found to sit in tractors. So physically, um, one farmer said, if you, don't, um, if you don't have a bad back, are you really a farmer? Now, if you're not crippled by back pain, that was it, are you a real farmer at all? Um, which is funny, but it's not funny. So, phys so physically, it's demanding long working hours are... Um, one of our studies didn't find, that, and I'll come to that, but the, the, one of our strands of the study predictably found plenty of people working seven days a week, very long hours, a, lot, a considerable proportion not taking any holidays, a lot of people not having any interests outside the farm. People saying things like, I used to play rugby, even young farmers, I used to play rugby, I used to play football, but not anymore. So um, those long working hours have, the, have an impact as well. So this investigation, as I mentioned, it was um, was part it was part of the larger the larger uh, project. So it was um, we just studied male farmers. What's and we asked them what was causing stress. We didn't set out to look at bureaucracy and finance. We set out to look: is it isolation? Is it bad backs? Uh, what we had we'd done the literature review, but we, we set up with an open mind and open questions to find out what is causing um, occupational stress and what can be done about it. So, how support should be provided. There we are. So, our methodology consisted of um, three strands. One strand was we went to an agricultural show and we spoke to 40 farmers at the agricultural show. We were aware of the limitations with that. The limitations, if you are suffering from long working hours, maybe poor health, and maybe financial issues, are you going to go to an agricultural show? Uh, perhaps, you know, th there was a bias there. So then we also, in the second strand, we went to um, three farmers markets uh, on two occasions each. And then finally, there was a focus group to get us really a bit more depth uh, about about the issue, a bit more descriptive, qualitative information. So yes, public events and purposeful sampling. So we did quantitative and qualitative. So we did want the uh, you know to find wanted to get those a good representation. And I know 94 in total out of uh, I 
I can't remember how many you said, Mark. Ireland families, it's just under 48,000. 48,000, so, so 94. Um, it's still not a, a massive sample size, but we wanted to get a decent sample size and we wanted to also get some qualitative information. So the, the data that we collected was analysed statistically and we looked at um, relationships between variables and then uh, the focus group, we, the discourse was thematically um, analysed. So I'll come, back to, I'll come back to the results now in a moment. So... Um, Yeah, well, no, just as if I just go back there a moment. Yes, we looked at ethical considerations as well. So no one was bullied into answering our questions. Uh, the people were asked uh, to voluntarily take part in the survey. We we didn't have leading questions. We'd open questions. We were careful about the design of the questionnaire. To um, we didn't start the questionnaire by saying how stressed are you. So and we told them uh, why why we were doing the study, what was it about, what was the purpose of, of the study, and we assured them of um, confidentiality. So we actually didn't take any names at all. We numbered, we numbered people. Um, and then, so we really tried to eliminate bias, and um, it, was, it, it was by consent. So the results. So as I mentioned, 94 farmers took place face-to-face -face questionnaires at um, agricultural event and farmers markets, <coughs> and then the focus group. So there was a clear agreement on the sources of stress, and as I said, it indicated the major issues, um, the highlighted most uh, predominantly were finance and bureaucracy, paperwork, red tape, um, however however you want to, changing regulations, uh, we'll call it bureaucracy as a general term. So those were the two major issues, but as I said, health issues came up. We didn't ask people about their personal health, but they kept voluntarily telling us health issues were a problem, bad backs and headaches they talked about a lot, and they talked about a lot. Some people talked about loneliness, some people a lot of people did, but a lot of people didn't. So other issues were brought up, but finance and bureaucracy really just uh, were, the, were the, main, the two main issues, and I'll explain that further now. So all, with regard to financial issues, um, Strand A, that was at the farmer's market, or no, the, the agricultural show, sorry, agricultural show, 48% of them reported that money, cons financial issues was their number one concern. And in Strand B, we asked in, on a rating scale, I thought that'd be more useful, on a scale of one to five, how stressed would you be about money, financial issues, and it averaged at 3.98, roughly, roughly four out of five. So some people weren't, but a lot of people were. A lot of people give it five out of five. But it averaged, um, in Strand B, there were 50, 50 farmers, and it averaged roughly four out of five. That's 80% uh, stressed. And Strand C, the focus group, well, I'll, I'll show you some of what the focus group said um, about financial issues. Or, yeah, well, they talked a lot about it, sorry, I'm... Moving on, so they, they mentioned financial issues. Was there, they, one of them said to quote, "Financial issues is my number one cause of stress." So they are worried about money, um, and then bureaucracy. The burden of paperwork was in strand A, twenty-one out of the forty. So you might see there that was nineteen for financial issues. So twenty-one out of the forty said that bureaucracy was um, that they were stressed to some degree about bureaucracy. And then um, with regard to the farmers markets that we felt was more representative, um, again on a scale of 1 to 5, how stressed are you with regard to bureaucracy and paperwork? It scored 4.2 out of 5, so it was more stressful than financial concerns and worries. So the focus group then talked about bureaucracy and this um, is what they said. I can never get the time to fill in all the necessary forms. Oh, sorry, that was for Strand A. That was at the that was at the agricultural show, um, and then I fall behind and I can't remember what I have to fill in, and it's, I find it all very complicated. And that was somebody who had enough time and was well enough to have thank good good for them have a day out at the at the show. Um, 
And then Strand C, that was the focus group, said the volume of paperwork expected from farmers is ridiculous and unnecessary. The paperwork required is constantly changing, but that's, that's our perception, and it's difficult for farmers to keep up to date with what's required. Um, that was uh, one farmer. Another farmer said farmers are constantly being watched. If we make a mistake or are late with a form, we, they will punish us with withholding a single farm payment. And a further farmer said, when I ring the, uh, for assistance, I'm forced to listen to silly music for half an hour until someone answers. I don't have that sort of time to waste. So th this was when we asked about what's causing you stress. We didn't um, ask to what degree is paperwork stressing you or what's wrong with paperwork. These were open questions for discussion. And this is what some of the farmers said. So anyway, strand A, um, with regard... Guard, oh, I wanted to say a few more things, sorry, about bureaucracy. Um, most of the farmers, the vast majority of farmers that we talked to were uh, what, livestock farmers, dairy and livestock. I think there was only one arable farmer. So, this, so there was a good mix because of the way the uh, different farmers' markets that we went to and at the agricultural show, we, we could, they told us they were, um, you know, uh, beef, sheep, pigs and mixed farm and dairy so there was a good mix of all of those but as i say uh, th there was only one i think arable farmer so they weren't re well represented they were mostly livestock and um, the other thing was the farmers did recognize that obviously there was a need for a bureaucracy there's a need for if they're expecting a single a payment they knew that and they knew for animal welfare reasons that paperwork they had to fill in forms it was necessary but overwhelmingly, you know, the comments were they felt it was uh, it, it was a huge burden. Uh, we've done we've another study that is just complete that hasn't been fully written up yet. That again is is saying that a third of them were stressed all the time, um, and another third of them were stressed most of the time. But a lot of them, this was in 2016. A lot of them are still talking about the burden of paperwork as well. So it's it's an ongoing issue. Well, they said they said it was. So um, with regard to support, you know, the literature review had said support was um, some people may avail of helplines and some people wouldn't, and maybe helplines are are useful for. Uh, more family members, a wider family rather than farmers themselves. So a lot of farmers um, said really that they didn't feel, a lot of them didn't feel informed about stress. And a lot of them, um, if they were going to access some support, the National Farmers Union would be a source of information for them. And with respect to information, um, a lot of them said that they would talk to their vet. And that was in all the strands. The vets came up in the agricultural show at the um, farmers markets and again in the focus group and again unprompted you know what what kind of support and who would you go to and uh, well i'd talk to my vet i see my vet as a professional and um yeah a vet would be somebody i feel i could talk to one of them even said i wouldn't talk to my doctor because he knows me and you know i wouldn't like to there was still the pride people were talking about um why would you not seek support or help? And it'd be pride, embarrassment. Embarrassment came through a lot. So I was surprised even their local doctor they felt was a bit too close for comfort. Um, and the other strands now, um, the, the women, that the women would talk to family members and friends more. But, and then a lot of, I mean, the odd one said they, they, they might access a helpline or they might access help at, at some of the, the social events, the farmers' markets, but a lot of them said they would talk to no one. But it was interesting that all three strands mentioned vets, poor vets, <laughs> the, the, the busy. And um, yeah, so 14 of the 40, ha you know, they had access information at these um, the mobile the mobile units that go round for farming, well-being, and health checks. That, that, 14 of the 40, which is, is a considerable percentage, would access help at those mobile um, events. So, 62% at the farmer's market, 62% said that they would feel comfortable approaching the vet. And this is what they said. I think perhaps if vets, vets were given 
were to give farmers advice and guidance on stress, it would be helpful. Farmers generally respect their vet as a well-educated person who knows what they're talking about. And one farmer suggested that on-farm help would be welcome, practical assistance with paperwork, um, where the help comes from directly to the farmers. Us farmers don't have time to trek to head office and sit on the phone for hours. So he talked about actual practical help with the paperwork. In the most recent um, study that hasn't been uh, written up yet, the a lot of the only a third of the farmers did their own paperwork and um, two thirds of them they, they didn't specify who did it a family but they did a lot of people did say they paid professionals to do their paperwork and obviously at a cost um, so just before I conclude there was one other thing I wanted to mention there about um, the farmers who said, when we asked them about, about what causes you stress, some of the farmers uh, who left that blank, they then went on and talked about stress afterwards, but they left the initial question blank, and some of them said not applicable, and some of them said I'm not stressed, and there was um, eight of those, seven of the eight uh, were all young farmers, so the younger farmers perhaps aren't feeling the pressure of finance and perhaps they're not feeling the pressure or the burden of paperwork or isolation or other issues to such a degree but I thought it was interesting of the people who appeared well it didn't specify that they were stressed about anything in particular seven of the eight were under 40. Anyway um, conclusions so in conclusion we have a few conclusions um, the burden of paperwork was identified as a key stressor from all strands, either by completing forms, either the difficulty in completing forms or the amount, the actual sheer volume of paperwork. There was some talk about, you know, um, online, submission online and problems with IT and um, they didn't mention literacy, but the, the literature review had discussed literacy uh, in farmers could be an issue. And then we know also that sometimes internet connections in rural settings can be a problem too. So paperwork. And then um, we were aware of the NFU that um, they, they said in 2015, the NFU said st that several actions still needed to be taken to reduce the burden of bureaucracy. And uh, this ties in with what Mark was saying earlier. And it, with, uh, with regard to the UK to context, um, the UK government reported in 2014 that, uh, that significant progress had been made. However, um, and the, the Better Regulation Delivery Office stated that um, regulators should avoid imposing unnecessary regulatory burdens through their regulatory activities and should assess whether there are less burdensome means to achieve outcomes and support those who are regulated. So that was avoid unnecessary burdens and assess whether there's less burdensome means to achieve outcomes and support those who are regulated. So we would recommend, in view of our findings on this study, um, we would, and also the recent uh, NFU survey, we recommend that you know this, the whole bur the whole bureaucracy burden on farmers be looked at again, and um, to see if it could be create more accessible, user friendly, and less weighty administrative procedures. And the study also highlights that I know not all. Although not always well utilised, support networks were valued and in particular vets were seen as an important source of advice. So we would recommend, in light of that, we would recommend that further work be undertaken to explore how this role could be acknowledged and how vets could be supported to allow them to provide further information and signposting for farmers. Um, I have to highlight that this study, the actual field work, was done in 2014 and 2015, so it was well before the, the Brexit vote and the subsequent uncertainty of the UK leaving Europe. So these, these were the results um, pre-Brexit. Pre um, so we didn't take account of any additional stress that might be causing farmers.
And finally, you know, we do feel that farmers contribute, and we all, I think we all acknowledge farmers contribute to the economy and contribute to society. And, you know, we, I think we, sh we do need to question, are we getting the benefits and are we morally obliged to try to reduce the burden and support farmers more? Um, so I, I can, I'll, leave, I'll leave you with that question. I would just finally like to say, that, as Mark mentioned, the author for this paper and the, and the, the wider research project was um, myself, Zena Lynch from Birmingham University, University of Birmingham, and Surinder Deshi, and then the university graduates, also university graduates, Cara Henry and Fiona McCrory. So um, thanks very much, and we'll welcome some discussion.